I've been saying for a while now that the future is going to be increasingly electric. Now for you, that might mean electric cars instead of gasoline. Or how about heat pumps for heating and cooling your house? Or induction cooktops for cooking instead of natural gas? Now all those things are going to be amazing. One thing the naysayers have always said is there's no possible way that the grid can cope with all that extra electricity usage. And they have a decent point, because as amazing as our grid is, it's one of humankind's greatest inventions. It hasn't really had a lot of innovation. That is, until now. This is the Span Smart Panel. And this is a look at the electrical service panel of tomorrow. Odds are your service panel looks kind of like this part with circuit breakers, but this has so much intelligence built in. And I think this is gonna be at the heart of solving a lot of the problems that we will face as we electrify more of our lives. So I'll go through a couple of really cool use cases for you, and I'll show you how this could potentially be the answer you're looking for. All that and more today on Tuba Da Vinci. Now, one of the biggest reasons why you might want to consider a product like SPAN is for energy management. In a lot of ways, the, the panel uh, as a product is kind of like an internet router for power for your house, right? It's the one device, the singular device that is directing traffic in all directions and keeping an eye on things uh, and taking into account your priorities, what's important to you. Here I am at the entrance point for where electricity comes into my house. And you can see here, really big cables that come from the grid. I have power lines in my neighborhood that run along the streets. Older neighborhoods usually have overhead, above ground power lines, but newer developments might have trenched underground power lines. That matters because if you want to do a service panel upgrade, this house wasn't too expensive because there was enough capacity in the neighborhood and running a line from over there down to here isn't so expensive. But I got a quote from a viewer of mine who recently requested a 200 amp service panel upgrade and the quote was for $16,000. And the reason why, they'd have to trench hundreds of feet from the transformer box or whatever the utility company operates to then run new line to his house. And when you're looking at prices like that, a span could make way more sense. And the reason why, a span can allow you to do more with just 100 amp service potentially, even car charging and all the other things, which is a really nice benefit. Also, you might not even be able to upgrade to 200 amp service because if your neighborhood already has a lot of homes and they've already been upgraded, there might not be enough capacity for you to literally physically upgrade. You might be stuck with whatever you have. And again, another perfect use case for SPAN. But to truly understand how SPAN with just the same 100 amp service can still power your electric life, let's go to the whiteboard. Let's look at a typical day in the life of our house. And yours is gonna be pretty similar. And to be even more conservative, we're gonna cap it at 100 amps. So if you have 100 amp service and you're thinking, can I possibly electrify everything? Let's see if we can, right? So 100 amps, 240 volt is 24 kilowatts, which is a massive amount of energy, honestly. And at our house, what I've noticed is our Normal baseline is around one kilowatt, a thousand watts. That might be a little bit high, yours might be lower, but that's a decent number. Refrigerators, all that kind of stuff. So for us in our house, we have a 1000 watt or one kilowatt load pretty much all the time. Now let's just kind of focus on the big energy hogs. If you have a microwave, that might be 1.5 kilowatts, 1500 watts, right? If you have a central air conditioning, that might be 4,000. If you have a double oven, 3,000 induction cooktop, that might be 2,500 watts, so 2.5 kilowatts. And of course, the big one is that car charger, which can pull up to 11 kilowatts, the biggest load that we have in our house. Now, clearly you can see 24 kilowatts is a massive amount, and we can probably fit all of that. So let's say, for example, during the day, we come home and turn on the microwave, and then our usage kind of comes up for a little while and then comes back down. That's how much a microwave would be on how much you have. Clearly not much of a problem. How about now suddenly your air conditioner turns on while the microwave is running, right? Okay, well the air conditioner might be kind of up to here, okay? Then let's say you're cooking breakfast and your induction cooktop turns on. That might bring it up to here. And then that car charger, that is the big one. That might push you all the way up around here. 
And now you're at that point where if you turned on a microwave or some other appliance, a space heater, for example, you might cross that threshold and trigger a condition where you're pulling too much power and trip the entire circuit breaker. That's what you want to avoid. If you have a traditional dumb panel, there's not much you can do about this situation because a dumb panel is kind of like the freeways were back in the 50s. So let's use the analogy of freeways. Back in 1950, let's say, they developed freeways and they said, okay, there's gonna be three lanes in either direction. We have northbound and then three lanes in the other direction, right? Southbound. And that sounded great because the number of cars in the world, this was gonna work. Fast forward 70 years and now we have an order of magnitude more cars and these roads really can't cope. It's exactly what's happening with the electric grid. This is not ideal because in the morning, maybe the traffic is all this way. So these three lanes are completely congested and these are empty. And then in the afternoon that flips around, people are driving home and these lanes are bogged down and these are empty. So a smart panel in some ways is kind of like one of those machines you've ever seen that move the concrete blocks around. So those machines that move the blocks around can come in and say, you know what, I wanna move the blocks on this side, allowing for an extra lane of traffic in the direction of travel. This way, now we have four lanes in the direction where everyone's headed and better occupy the same amount of real estate, right? The road isn't changing in size, but now we can better handle the load and then in the evening, do the opposite and move that lane over to here and allow more traffic in the direction that we want. This is kind of an analogy to how a smart panel would work. So let's go back to the panel example. This would be a problem, right? You'd be tripping your circuit breaker, but instead if the span, which is centrally tied to everything, it knows all these loads and it knows what it's doing, and with that update in the future with the span drive, it could say, okay, we're gonna have a problem here. Span drive, why don't we taper you down a little and only charge at seven kilowatts now, right? That way you can use that microwave. Oh, but then your heat pump water heater just turned on. And again, you're gonna go and be a problem. Okay, well, why don't we do this? We'll come down to four kilowatts now and charge your car at a lower rate, that way we can run your microwave and your heat pump water heater and still be under the max limit. That's the whole game. That's literally the purpose of this unit and what it can do for you. So you still have your 100 amp service, right? Like the six lanes of that freeway we talked about earlier, but now we can intelligently manage that same capacity better. How about electric vehicle charging? Odds are EV charging is the biggest reason why you'll have to upgrade your service from 100 amp to 200 amp. And that's because this right here is a 240 volt, 48 amp charger, which means this can pull 11 kilowatts from the grid, a huge draw, and most likely the biggest reason why you'll have to upgrade your service. This is span, this is called the span drive. It's a separate unit, it's an add-on accessory, but the reason why I went with it is it has a couple of really key features. Now, obviously it's a charger like every other charger. It's J1772, so it's made for all EVs. I have my Tesla adapter on it, but of course you can take that on or off. But the really amazing part about this is how well integrated it is into the app. For example, here in the flow tab, I can see the span drive, what it's doing right now. You can see it's not charging currently. And what's really awesome is that span uses API integration to talk to my Tesla directly. Now, I'm not sure if your model of EV will be compatible or not, but I think a lot of them will be. This is so cool because I know the state of charge of my car, how much range it has left and how it's charging. Of course, I can charge it or stop it. I can turn off that entire circuit if I wanted to. If my solar power right now is producing 4,800 watts, and my home is using 1400, I'm exporting about 3,400 watts to the grid. Now, if you live in a place where the grid doesn't really give you a good credit or any kind of money for excess generation, it's not worth it for you to give them free energy. You're much better off utilizing it. And the greatest sink to dump a ton of energy into in your home is your electric car. This is all software enabled technology. So our products are, are getting smarter over time. We're adding features and we intend to add features around solar charging with things like NEM3 in California, which is a total shift in how folks get compensated for the solar on their roof. There's just a need for smarter management of where power is going when. Uh, and uh, th these are features like you described, solar charging, 
that uh, we are, are really excited to release uh, in, in the short future here uh, with the SPAN products. So here at home, we can produce around nine kilowatts at peak time. So, you know, we have zero all night and then it starts to pick up and it comes to here and then it goes like this, right? That's what our solar can do. And now let's say we live in a place where the grid will not give you any credit or money, any exchange for exporting extra energy. Well, if that is the case, well, when we need to power something, we can. And then let's say, for example, we have a battery as well. I don't know if this works. We can fill out and charge a battery with the remainder, right? And then maybe the battery by around noon is full. So we've been charging the battery and now the battery is full. So now what do you do with all that extra energy? You have your battery charged for the night and you don't need anything more than that. You can charge your car, right? So that span drive comes in and says, okay, the AC turns on and then it's the microwave and then not really much of anything. And then, oh, you need a lot. And then this, and that's what your load looks like. Well, the span drive can just charge and fill in what's left. So it can charge to that level and take all that solar power and leave it with you and then charge at a lower rate, right? Maybe there's a seven kilowatt and then maybe here it's only four and then it's five and then it's nine and then it's only two, but it can keep all of your power with you at your house. Now, if you have time of use billing, there's also a little bit of a game you can play with that. You can charge your car at times when the grid is very affordable. So you can charge your car and say, look, the electricity prices are very low. I'm not gonna get much credit for charging. I'll charge my car. And then later in the evening, run on batteries and other things. But the point is, it all comes down to capacity and allocation. And where you live, you might not be able to get more juice out of your lines. You might not be able to get a service panel upgrade. And a span panel could help you better intelligently manage your energy. That is killer feature number one. Control charging as a function of what your house is doing overall. And because this is sitting in the middle of solar and car charging and everything else, it knows the entire picture of your electricity usage. The second killer feature is because this band panel doesn't require a critical loads panel. When I get battery backup in the future, I can actually charge my car even if the power grid is down. Here's how that works. Typically, when you install one of these, you would have to do a critical loads panel if you got a battery. In my old house, I had a Tesla Powerwall and it couldn't power everything, right? And as a result, they take the smaller circuits, like all the 20 amp stuff, and they move it to a critical loads panel and have the battery run that. But the big boys don't move over. Electrical vehicle charging, your AC, double ovens, all the really large 240 volt appliances don't make the cut. Which means even if I have a really good sunny day and I have a ton of solar power, if you don't have one of these, you have to sacrifice certain circuits depending on what your critical loads panel has. Now for span, you don't have to have that because they can software control that. In my span app, I can tell it these loads are critical, like the office, for example. No matter what, the office has to have power. Then maybe the guest bedrooms, yeah, non-critical. Some things could be nice to have, like the pool. If I have enough power, nice to have. But if the battery goes to a certain limit, turn that off. So I can go must have, nice to have, non-critical. And this can do that in software. Instead of being forced to not have air conditioning or car charging if the power goes out, that is really big for me. And the reason is I have an 11 kilowatt solar system. In my solar system at peak noon, I'm making almost nine or 10 kilowatts of electricity. That means I could charge my car and run my AC at the same time or at least one or the other. But I have the luxury of choosing based on what my house is doing and the span would know exactly what was going on. And that is the power of that kind of knowledge. Without that, you have to just make a hardware decision. Uh, that's too big. You might not be able to power it, so you can't have it. And I don't wanna have that limitation because what if the power goes out for two days? No air conditioning, no heating. If the power is out for two days, that could be a big problem depending on where you live. So the span drive enables you to charge your car with excess energy and it'll monitor what's extra and just hit that limit to minimize what you're giving back to the grid, leaving all the energy in your house. That is brilliant and I can't wait for that update. And two, with one of these, you could charge your car with this. You could run your AC even if the power were to go out. When you have batteries, that'll be a future video. I don't have batteries just yet, still working on that. But that is amazing. And two of the main reasons why I love this thing. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about the battery market and these products is they're really non-homogeneous. They install differently. So um, 
generally, yep, it'll work. Uh, but the systems that we pair with, we do software integration. We make sure we can deliver these really unique features like managing your loads based on the state of charge of the battery or the available power from the battery. Uh, so to get that full span experience with the automated management piece, uh, I'd recommend going with those systems. How about solar panels? How would that fit into your span panel? Well, first of all, you can tell here that I can monitor my solar production in real time. The first cool thing about this is I have my microinverters that tell me every five or 15 minutes, but I can't see real time. And this is every like two seconds, which is absolutely amazing. 55, 44, let's see, 44, 98. It's changing in real time. So I can see the solar production all in the same app, which is the first cool benefit. Now all my different strings of inverters run into this main panel and from here it runs over to the span and goes into that circuit right there. Now once you've done that, all you have to do is in the app, tell it which circuits are solar. So for example, for me, it's this 240 right here, 26 and 28. And once you've set that all up, the span knows exactly how much energy you're producing. And that could help once you have a battery and everything else to know how much energy you have coming in and what it should do. And that's how it knows how to charge your car because it has all that information. So you can still have monitoring with your other stuff. You have Solar Edge, I have Hoy Miles, Microinverters, Enphase, whatever system you have, you can still use that and have the data on their cloud, but you also have the data locally. Now check out some of these stats real quick. If I go here into the solar section, you can see what I've made for the day. So for today, I've made 54 kilowatt hours, which is pretty amazing. Now, one feature request that I asked about, but it turned out was already in here, is to be able to see the power, like how much, how many watts are coming in. And actually you can, all you do is you press on the screen and you move your finger around and you can see I had a peak of around 8,800 watts and now I'm doing about 4,600. So all the solar information is right here and it keeps a record of all of it, again, in one app. So for the month so far, I've made 882 kilowatt hours and that just makes me so happy. So is the span panel perfect? No, of course not. Let's talk about some of the cons. First of all, if you're thinking, oh, smart circuit breaker, that means if I turn on my microwave and the coffee maker at the same time and I flip a circuit, I can just grab my phone and turn it back on. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. You still have mechanical breakers and that's for legal and safety reasons. You still have to come back over and flip it back on. But there are software circuits as well, right? So you can trip a circuit via software on the phone, but that doesn't have anything to do with the mechanical breakers in your panel. The second is on the mobile app. I wish there were a couple more features. For example, scheduling. Imagine being able to turn on circuits at a certain time and turning them off. Like maybe you want to have all your batteries for your tools charge at midnight when prices are cheaper. And imagine you can just turn it on and turn it off in the app. That'd be cool. Or notifications. If one circuit is using way more power than normal or what I'd expect, I'd love to get a notification about that. Now talking to the team, I think these kinds of features are all on their roadmap and depending on when you get one of these, they might already be around or might be available at that time. So definitely check that out. But the biggest con by far is gonna be price, which is going to be more expensive. I mean, this has brains and software and ethernet ports and networking capabilities. You can check on your system anywhere in the world. That kind of stuff is amazing, but it does come at a cost compared to a metal box like a traditional circuit breaker panel. Now the pricing is gonna vary wildly depending on where you live, labor costs and stuff like that. But we'll put links in the description to check out pricing where you live to give you a better idea. But the reality is it is expensive, but depending on what you're doing and what your limitations are, maybe it makes sense. And a top tip, by the way, the best way to think about all these projects is planning. Take your time to plan this out. For example, if you're getting an EV charger installed, you might have to get a service panel upgrade anyway. That would be the time to make this change because they might have to go from 100 amp to 200 amp. They might need a bigger box to have more slots for those new appliances. If you're gonna do that, going with a span panel would be the perfect option because there's not really much difference from installing one of these versus a traditional panel and you can save money that way. Also, if you're going solar or getting a battery, any of those kinds of things that require electrical work to be done, you might be able to get a combination deal to save on labor and to save some money. But at the end of the day, this is a premium product. I mean, just look at it. Absolutely beautiful. My old panel was outside, out of sight, out of mind. But this one is so pretty, I wanted to see it 
all the time, so I put it here in my garage. And you will pay a premium for a premium product. But hopefully you've seen that with software updates and stuff, this thing will keep getting smarter and the value proposition will continue to grow. And hopefully in the future we have entire communications protocols for all the appliances that can all talk to something like this. And this is kind of the first step in that journey. But hopefully you've seen that there's a lot of use cases and value in something like this, and the cost at the end of the day will come down to you and your use case. There are cheaper ways to go to monitor power, for example, but to get a full control system like this that can turn off circuits and do that level of functionality requires something pretty hardcore like this. It's kind of been a goal of mine since college, 20 years ago, to live in a house that was truly net zero, meaning I made my own electricity, I stored it, and ran all of my house, everything, including driving, from solar power. And I think I'm getting close. When I first bought this place, I was buried in huge natural gas and electric bills. But now with my solar and batteries coming next, I'm pretty close to getting there. So next up for us, we'll be getting heat pumps to replace my natural gas furnace, to getting a heat pump water heater and a heat pump clothes dryer. Now all those things are gonna have little blips of, of energy usage that'll be tougher to manage. But with span or something like this, I think I'm gonna be able to do it. Long term, my goal is to eventually just shut off the grid and go a couple of weeks and see if I can truly do this. And with all the monitoring of span and with all the ways that it integrates and it allows me to taper my car charge and all these other intelligent features, I think I'm gonna get there. But honestly, the reason why I'm most excited about this is not even what they can do today, but what they can do tomorrow. Think about the first iPhone. When the iPhone first came out, it was cool. YouTube and the best web browser was great, but nobody could have predicted when the App Store came out how all these things in your life you could now do on your mobile device. And I think that's gonna be the way this goes with Span. This is the first starting point. The brains and the hardware are now in place, and who knows what kinds of cool new features that they roll out. An App Store, Span, if you're watching, that would be kinda of cool. That different people develop cool tools to help with energy monitoring or other different cool use cases, that could be kind of a fun thing. But as I look forward, now that I have a brain at the center of my electric life, I'm really excited about all the possibilities that will come next. And I'm gonna be chatting with, with Span and giving him my ideas and feedback and stuff, and I'm so excited to see all the software updates and everything else. Software updates, how amazing is that? Your service panel is now getting software updates. That's the world we live in now, but we'll need it. If we're gonna go all electric, to get rid of all these natural gas appliances, run on solar and all of the stuff that we always talk about on this channel, we're gonna need to rethink everything from the ground up. And this is one of those steps in the right direction. All right, that is a look at the SPAN panel. Thank you so much for watching. Leave us your comments. Let us know if you have questions or what use cases apply to you. We'll try to get back to all of you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ricky Tuba Da Vinci. We'll catch you guys next week.